Hey guys, gals, and legionnaires, Rykon here, and welcome back to Let's Play Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, Noah's Tale, episode 23, and some of you may be thinking, Rykon, what's going on with the colors here? Well, in the latest experimental that I've just kind of chucked on, it does take me a little while to introduce them sometimes, because I like to see what's happening in them before I put them on. We've got a... Well, we've got a pretty big increase to the lighting engine here. So the reason it's all kind of grayed out here is because it's dark in here. Now, if Noah moves away from her bed, we can see that this color where she is now. And if we activate our flashlight, we can see perfectly fine. So even though it's 10 o'clock and it's sunny, it's sunny outside. And it would make sense that with there being no windows here and no lights in here, that it would be dark. And that's what it is. It's dark, but we can still kind of see what's going on. Which I think is, I think it's a really, really awesome change. So, let's have something to eat. Which we actually don't have a hell of a lot of. We just have water for now. Um, so we will just consume that water, but we will be, we will be moving out of here very, very soon. So... See, that downfall blanket we actually want to bring with us. Uh, we're we're going to get on out of here. I'm going to drag that out the way. It is raining outside. It's just a drizzle at the stage, but it could grow to be larger. Let's see, I'm just going to pull up the map and just see what we've got going on. Um, something that I should have remembered, and for some reason wasn't able to remember, is that you can also hit Shift E. And that means that you can just mark things as explored. Shift E and then it grays it out. Nice and easy. So I don't need to have those notes on. So I think I will start to do that from now on. I'm almost tempted to very quickly go in here and just clear all these notes. Just because, um, well, if they're flashing, it generally means that there's something going on there. Be it an NPC or a horde or myself. So I think having these here may actually end up distracting me and yeah. So I'm, I'm fine with keeping the other ones for now, because they're far away, but we will <laughs> we will look at changing those. So we have two NPCs near us. I think one of them will be Rory. Yep, Rory. We remember Rory. But Chanel Boykin. Watch out for Chanel. I am wanting to get everything that's in our tractor and bring it back home. But then I am wanting to go on that little bit of a road trip I was talking about, heading down here just to kind of see if we can end up getting across and getting back over to these houses here with the tractor but um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push it too far I'm not gonna push it too hard we're just gonna we're just gonna see how it goes um, I just need to remember exactly where my stuff is but um, it's quite cool so you can see here this is where the the kind of the light drops off from outside which I think is I think I think it's awesome I think it's a really 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 cool look to it Okay, we've got a Grim Howler nearby. Mm. Oh wow, and we can go super zoomed now. Interesting, because I was just going for the zooms, and we can go this close as well. And even this close, that's um, that's interesting. I, I really like the options that they, uh, they give us there. It means that I will have to jump through a few, but um, that's okay. Okay, let's close it up. Now... I don't think that Grim Howler is still... No, he can't see us. So that's good. So let's just come into here. Let's see. Hmm. Let's grab a tin of beans. And it's just a tin of beans. I know it's not great. But uh, we're going to eat it. Um, okay, we're not we're not full yet. I'd like to be full. So um, let's just jump in here. And we're actually going to grab another. There we go. Full. And let's get slaked as well just so we're all we're all good there all right we still got our bb gun and our bb's out um i'm probably going to put that away for now because we've done a little bit of training a little training session with it put that back in here and let's see i'll just dump a few other bits and pieces in here as well i think that's going to do it though okay great so i'm gonna have a quick look at the vehicle five percent diesel 15 percent battery Okay, it's pretty good. Let's get it going. Oh, here we go. Shift six. And we're on our way back home. Just wonder if it's going to be easier for me to uh, to drive around to the side here this time. 
I don't think I've actually driven this way, so... Yeah, we'll see how we do. Noah seems to be doing a fine job. I, I say that, but then I couldn't, I couldn't turn away from that. No matter how hard I tried, <laughs> I couldn't turn away from it. We've got a zombie dog. Um, okay. I'm going to see if I can just uh, navigate around him for now. Because he seems to be out here on his lonesome. Yeah, there we go. We are skidding a little bit here, but that's it's not too bad. Tractor's holding together nicely, and we got a minefield, so we want to avoid that. We sure do. Okay. Alright, we should be getting closer to home now. And that moose is... Looks like he might be aggressive. Um, hmm. No, he's just tracking right now. He's tracking. He's moderately injured. Um, so he might... He might aggress. Nope. He's okay. Let's keep on moving. I'm driving at a cautious pace currently. Just because, uh... Yeah. Watch out for zombies like that. Because this ain't our armoured car. No siree. Um, I mean, I could potentially just stay home and read today, but um, I'm feeling like this is a an episode worthy of um, exploration. And so that's what we're going to do. We will have some reading episodes coming up, no doubt. Um, it looks like we do have some friends here. We've got a fat zombie, a feral runner even. Hmm, okay. So they will... Ooh, don't want to hit that. They'll come and join us over here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was very close. <laughs> we fumbled with the controls there for a second. Okay, we're just... we're gonna stop here. It's a safe kind of distance. Now we're probably gonna get wet. I'm gonna jump out. Activate the sheath. Um, there's no bushes around, so this feral runner is probably going to catch up to us. Actually, we might be able to get away. Oh, looks like we've got a few. Okay, it seems that Noah's going to be doing a little bit of fighting here today. That's right, she's used to it. Damn it, we smashed it. That's awesome, that was a good damn it, by the way. <laughs> Oh. I love this Nodachi. I really do. Um, right. We're going to appear in army pants at the moment, so we don't need those. Stop butchering. Yes. Okay. That fat zombie's going to reach us probably before we can finish butchering. So we'll let him come. There's a grabber as well. Ooh. He actually survived for a little bit there. Let's see what we've got. Nothing. That's okay. Nothing for us. Stop butchering. Yes. We're going to clear out our home. Well, they can take a little bit more damage. God damn, that rain is intense. Hmm. Nothing for us. I want to just take care of these guys before we leave or start moving anything. Come on. There we go. Bring on the others. Oh, it's taken a few more swings to get them, but we can still send them reeling, which is good. Alright. We're upset because we are wet. 
Yep. Uh, no. And it looks like we got another fat zombie coming our way. And there's a zombie cop as well. It's alright. Nothing we can't handle. Ooh, okay. I don't want to get overconfident. But I am. <laughs> Okay. Quickly check the map. No, there's no hordes, so it's just a just a few of them that have been hanging out around here. Actually, they're probably far enough away that they're not going to cause us trouble. Once to northwest, maybe. Yeah, he seems to be coming for us. Let him come. We're going to start moving some objects. Um, actually, because the zombie will probably try and smash through that. We're just going to we're going to wait for him to arrive. I don't want to draw the others. Um, let's just see if we can see him. Yeah. Let's go out and meet him. Because we're just going to continue getting more and more wet out here otherwise. Come on. There we go. Taught them listen. Okay, we'll be safe for now. Let's see, we want to get everything from here and we want to shift it to there. Oh, let's try that again. There we go. So we're just going to hit comma and shift everything. Just like so. I'm going to do the same thing again. Oh, a little bit of a rest from the rain. <laughs> Can be a bit intense on the ears once it's been going for a while. Oh, now it's really dark in here. But um, we can still move about. We still know what's going on. Ah, now the sorting. The sorting is going to take a little bit. Um, Let's see, we've got all of our foods here, it looks like. Oh, cans. Okay, so that's our miscellaneous drawer, and that's our drink drawer. Okay. Right, we're just going to move this stuff a little bit further along. Yeah, just get to somewhere where we can kind of move most of the things. Okay, so I think first up we're going to end up throwing all of our food in the fridge. So we're just going to come under here, look under food, and we're just going to chuck everything that's actually food and not a drink into the fridge. I think I'm even storing perishable food in there. Quite a few bird eggs. Um, just to see. Yes, I am storing non-perishable food in there as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll check the oil in there as well. Pretty much most of the things are going to go in here. There we go. Okay. And the next lot are going to go there, I believe. It's all of our drinks. And not bandages. Great. So, that was a decent amount that we're moving already. This still so, we got so many guns from that hall and weapons as well. I'm pretty damn happy with how that went. Uh, so that's our weapons stockpiled there. So let's have a look up there, then down here. We want to go to guns, and we're going to chuck all of our guns in there, like so. Same thing for the ammunition. And we are also going to keep our weapons there as well. Yeah. So we'll drop them all there. The sledgehammer is kind of a tool. I'm tempted to actually grab that and drop it over with the tools. I think it would probably do better there. Oil lamp. Oh, there's just so many, <laughs> so many handy and useful things. 
So that's most of our tools. And these are crafting supplies. Okay, good. We're going to shift things again. Just move them on across. Okay. Books. Okay. So many books. So many books. Jeez. This was a pretty good haul. Not bad at all. Actually, we've got armor as well, so... Hmm. Have to think about what I want to do with that. Okay, let's grab our tools. Sledgehammer is going to fit into that as well. Okay. The pelt, I actually want to get into the fridge. Even though it is a crafting supply, it's going to go off. Okay, shifting down. A little bit of inventory <laughs> management again this episode. But it's all part of surviving. Okay. Drugs, chuck them all in. And you know what? Let's keep the bandages. Yeah, let's say we want to take five, I think, of them. Probably, I reckon, five. Let's have a look. Oh, we'll just take them all. We'll take them all. It's all good. Hmm. So the rest seems to be a mixture of miscellaneous goods and other things that we might be able to use for supplies. And clothing. The clothing we can move. So let's just jump across here like that. The clothing. Move them all across. And we'll actually move the armor as well. I'm just going to shift those across until we get them to our wardrobe. Where we're going to keep pretty much all our things. Bam. Well, the day's been going by outside just fine. Okay. I think most of these other bits and pieces I'm going to be happy to keep in our kind of general... Our general crafting getup. Which is kind of here. Because I think most of these things are actually kind of classified as spare parts. I suppose other than the ethanol... But I will be using that in crafting as well. Great. So that's everything unloaded so far. Now I'm going to want to come into here and I am going to want to try and take some food with us. Hmm, I probably should cook some more of that meat, in fact. Although we still do have... <laughs> that meat's going to go off. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get it done in time. Um, so we will just grab, we'll grab a few bits and pieces. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to fill up the water before we leave. But uh, let's, let's eat that sandwich for now. Wow, well, we just smashed through that and we're still feeling pretty good. Uh, nah, we'll save it. Come out here. Gallon jug of water. Let's fill that. Great, so fill it up with water. Now it is just regular water. Could make us sick. Um, yeah, it would be wiser to, well, to actually boil it. But we're just going to try and going to try and run with it. Okay, we're going to go back up on the main road now. It's going to be the fastest way for us to actually get over to where we want to be. We'll leave our poor vehicle all smashed and battered. Oh, jeez. Okay, that, see, that's not what I wanted to happen. Um, now we've lost our other wing mirror, and we've lost part of the front of the tractor as well. <laughs> so Noah can and does still lose control of vehicles from time to time, and it's much more punishing in this vehicle because it's not really designed to, it's not designed to take it. It's just a tractor after all. 
Um, we've got a zombie wolf coming after us. Grim Howler. Um, we need to try and dart across this field. No doubt there's going to be a few dead lingering out here. Well, actually, I say lingering, but this is where we ran down quite a few of them. So, more like they're probably reviving. Um, yeah. Not good for us. Not at all. Okay. I should be safe if I come through this field here. Uh, this is where so much of our fighting happened. But luckily, the ones out this side we've actually butchered and taken care of, so... Oh, hello. And there goes the actual wing mirror itself. It wasn't doing anything for us, but it's gone now. <laughs> yep. Okay, we need to pull back across. Get away from the swamp. Should be at the road very soon. And there we are. Back on the road. Once more. Okay. Drive down here just a little bit and then we're just going to check out the map and see what's going on. Maybe check out that vehicle. Okay, so we can see a lot more of the town, which is cool. And it does look like there is a road that will take us across the bridge, which is awesome. Hotel. Hmm. I imagine there could be a rather large number of dead there. Something for us to watch out for. But um, I think we'll just continue down along this road for a bit and see, see what we can find. I'm tempted to actually stop here and have a look at this vehicle. Actually, we can actually just have a quick check. The wheels seem to be okay. Uh, most of them seem to be okay. Engine is a little damaged. No, we're just going to keep on moving. Because uh, those flies and other bits and pieces are going to want to come for us. There's an engine just on the road. Yeah, it's a pretty small engine. Alright. What are we seeing? Muscats. Diving in and out of the water larger engine and I think once we get to this little section here we're gonna have a look at the map again and just see what's happening okay right well the, the town continues down for quite a bit it seems quite a bit and um, we've got an office tower it looks like an office tower and lots of parks around here parks and pools some houses so there's a little bit of a junction here, and there's two bridges that cross the river. Um, and it seems like this is kind of the edge here of Avon Heights, but it does seem to extend down here a bit as well. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we, we're going we're gonna to jump in a little bit closer now, just so we can be mindful of where we're steering. Um, because we could run into trouble trying to get across those bridges and heading back into a place where we spent such a long time trying to escape. Yeah. Um, looks like this could be a SWAT vehicle, which could be worth stopping for. It's actually definitely worth stopping for, based off the, uh, the last one that we found. Let's have a look and see what the quality of the vehicle is like. So it's an RV, actually. It's an RV, um, and well, it's got enough wheels. It's just out of gas. That's really its only major problem. I wouldn't mind having an RV. Um, it's actually got um, floor lighting as well, which is cool. Yeah, we've got a mini fridge. It's not bad. It's in relatively decent condition. Um, I don't know if it takes diesel or petrol though. I'm assuming it takes... No, it takes gas. Yeah, so we wouldn't be able to use um, anything from the tractor to power that, unfortunately. So we're just going to turn on and carry on. Uh, have a look at the map first. Yeah, this this really goes down for a bit. This, this city is big. It stretches on. So I think we're going to try and come across this bridge here and cut down past these office towers. Maybe try and go up near the... Or actually... 
yeah, we'll see where that road goes. Because if it can connect to here, ideally what we're wanting to do is get down to these houses. That's my goal. We'll see if that uh, works out for us though. Engine fails to start. There we go. And it's actually gone sunny. Nice. Um, can I close the door? Yep, while we're driving. Okay. Uh, come on. Let's go. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to ease my way around that. Oh. Drive nice and slow through here. Nice and slow, Noah. Um, let's go up that side. And <laughs> it's drizzling again. Okay, we've got some dead. Oh, crap. Okay. Pull away from it. Damn it. Okay, it looks like that's a uh, SWAT vehicle, possibly. Security van, yeah. So they could have uh, they could have supplies for us in the back there. But um, we're going to try and not concern ourselves with that. And as best as we can, make our way around them. Okay, might be a little harder than I thought. There are a lot of them here. Which I guess is to be expected. We could try and... No, we can't go around the back. Shit. Not good. Okay. Yeah, as I've previously stated, this really isn't built for ramming. Um, it's our tractor for getting about the farm. <laughs> and this may have been a mistake. Yep. May have been a mistake. Oh dear. Oh dear. It's just doing a bit of thinking. <laughs> as it's spawning all kinds of trouble for us. Let's chuck up our map. Okay. Seems like this road does go on for a little bit further. So we're going to try and follow that. Try and get away from the ginormous amount of... Yeah. <laughs> Lots of swimmers. Even more child zombies. Just, yep. A whole heap of pain waiting for us. Pain that we just, uh, we don't want to have to deal with. Don't hit the car. There we go. Okay. Oh, boarded up windows. What is this here? It's a school bus. Could be a survivor's house, possibly. Hmm. Not worth stopping for right now. Um, we want to keep on heading down. For the time being. Leave me alone, grabber. Damn it. What are you? Fire engine. Looks like a small fire engine. Oh, damn. Just stay away. I don't want anything to do with you. Okay, we've got some wolves. Oh, I can breathe a little easier now. We're passing between the towns, or at least part of the towns. Um, looks like maybe apartment blocks. Is that what the big A's are? Apartment tower. Now what's that A then? Arcade. Right. Okay, so it seems that this road's going to connect, which is what we want. Um, I'm just hoping there isn't many down here, so that we can actually try and get into those houses. The wolves are actually chasing us down. There's some ballsy wolves. They're actually still following us. <laughs> uh, let's drink some of that water now. There we go, that's slaked us. Okay. And we'll try and avoid the wasp. Or bee in this case, actually. Cool, okay, so... It looks like we are going to have to go a little bit off-road, but that's okay. There is a bunker here, which hopefully isn't defended. The bunkers shouldn't be. Uh, they're only defended on the inside. Uh, we don't really have anything we can do with that just yet. Because I don't believe we have any military IDs. Uh, which is a shame. But, oh well. We don't need them right now. 
what we need is to stay focused. Okay. Good job, Noah. Not seeing many dead, which is good. Um, I think a lot of them probably got pulled away from the bottom of the town when we were making all that noise earlier on. Um, but there's still a, a good chance that there's a lot there. Based from the wander spawns and from the original static stuff as well. Um, those wolves are probably going to try and follow us. <laughs> Psychotic wolves. Okay, so this is the bunker, but um, yeah, like I said, probably not going to be able to do anything there because um, we don't have any military ID cards, so we're just going to leave that be and carry on. But um, there, there's a big truck there. A few, actually. What do we got? Security van and a big semi truck. Hmm. Okay, we're getting close to the houses. I'm tempted to have a look at the security van. Although its wheels are... No, its wheels are out. Okay, we need to avert our course. Head down into the field a little bit. So that we can just head down to those houses. Ah, we're close, we're close. Now the reason I wanted to go back to those houses is because, well, one of them had a decent amount of weapon, oh, sorry, weapon modifications that we'd be able to use. Um, but not only that, but another one of them had a large number of survivor zombies in their basement. And the survivor zombies can have some really, really good gear on them. Shit. But it appears that we have trouble in the form of zombie necromancers and, yep, a shocker zombie as well. Which is not cool. It's not what I wanted. Um, yeah. That really sucks. Oh, holy shit. Hello. Who are you? Rob Keys, who's wielding a... He's destroyed that turkey. He's wielding an M4A1. Okay. Come talk to me, he says. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I guess we will. Well, stop. There is a hell of a lot of dead coming, buddy. I hope you got a plan. Let's talk to Rob Keys. Drop your weapon. You motherfucking... <laughs> God damn it. Drop your motherfucking weapon, loser. Um, yeah, we'll drop, we'll drop the Nodachi. We'll, I, I don't know if we're dropping, dropping, or just putting it away. We are in a vehicle, though. Now get out here before I kill you. Okay, I'm going. God damn it. Okay, we grabbed the Nodachi back. We're going to get the hell out of here. I'm just going to drive really, really quickly and try and turn away. Yep, he's firing his gun, but he's got bigger trouble right now. And we're going to try and take advantage of that. Oh, damn. Okay, we're going to slow down. Okay, we're going to slam right into those. Okay, we actually turned out okay. That's good, that's good. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, we're going to try and pull up towards this house now. Because we didn't come down here for nothing. We're going to wield that Nodachi. And we're going to move. Right, now I need to see which house this is. So this is the survivor house, and that's our weapons mods. So, I'm going to head down into the basement. Now they are definitely dead down here. So, I need to be ready for them. Yep, there they are. There they are, and there's quite a few survivor zombies. As we can see, and there's also a spitter zombie as well, which ain't great. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to move up here, and we're going to try and use these shelves as much as possible. And hope that that spitter spits real soon. It doesn't seem to be wanting to spit, which is... Oh, shit. We're going to try and move out of it as fast as possible. Okay, one more close-up. We just need to get that spitter dead. Okay, 
before it can do more damage to us. The survivor zombies are going to be resistant to my strikes. But we just need to keep moving. We are going to start to get tired. I'm actually just going to run for a little bit and try and get behind this. See, we've got quite a few guns up here as well, so this really hasn't been for nothing. We're going to try and let our breath come back and just keep on going at them. Okay, we're going to move back. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, Noah is quite out of breath, but we're very quickly going to butcher all of these. We heard Kablam. Oh, crap. Is he coming for us? Is Because he's still alive. If I see someone coming down that stairs... Oh, man. He's fighting all of them upstairs at the moment. Good luck to him. That's all I can say. Right, so now we can see there are all kinds of goodies. Oh, oh I'm getting excited already. Okay, so we can see there is a... What have we got? We've got a tactical helmet. Awesome. A lightweight black helmet that provides excellent protection from all kinds of damage. Um, we then also have a ballistic, a ballistic mask. And this thing is awesome. It's a protective reinforced Kevlar mask that covers the face. Provides excellent protection from ballistic threats. So it's a Kevlar mask for your face. Awesome. That's going to protect our eyes, our mouth. Um really all round good we, we we definitely want to have that um we really really do armored fingerless gloves awesome there's morphine um we've got a survivor hood kevlar and leather a customized heavily armored leather and kevlar hood designed to provide comfort and protection from harm so this thing this thing's good it's going to keep us uh, it's going to keep us warm um and it's going to protect our head as well We've got a holster, we've got some Xanax, we've got some light survivor gloves, which are actually probably going to be better than the armored ones, actually, because we've got 100% coverage on those. And then the encumberment isn't that isn't that big either, and it gives us, it gives us protection. Bone armor boots. Right, okay, okay, they don't fit, um, they have a decent amount of encumberment on them. We have an army helmet, a manual auto shotgun, which is pretty much just as awesome as it sounds it's a six barrel hand cranked automatic shotgun made from bicycle parts though a bit unwieldy it is exceedingly powerful for such a simple machine yeah so it's got a hand crank on it um so these these really were proper survivors but this is what i was probably most excited about this aep suit it's an armored environmental protection suit custom built from a clean suit and body armor this thing covers our torso, our arms, our legs, and it fits us. And it doesn't actually cost that much to wear as well. So, awesome. Really, really cool. Um, I'm very, very quickly going to go and check the others as well. We've also got some chitinous gauntlets, um, which the incumbent is obviously a lot higher on that. Uh, yeah, so let, let's, let's quickly head down here and see what we've got. I don't think they're going to have much else for us because I think that these were just the zombies. Although in saying that, we have a credit, which we'll take. Leather backpack. No, that's a, that's about it. That's all that we'll take from him. So this is what, we're hearing Walker Blams from above. Oh dear, this is what I'm wanting to look at here. These things. So we're just going to grab. We're going to grab the other, the smaller bits and pieces first before we grab the others. Okay. So we'll take those. Now, I'm probably going to want to do like a little bit of comparing here. So let's see. We're going to have to hit shift I and then up. We want to compare, first of all, the army helmet and the tactical helmet. See which one's better. Um, okay, so tactical helmet's a little bit less for us to wear, but that's fine. We can wear as much as we want on our head, really. Um, this gives us better warmth. Um, the protection pretty much seems to be the same. So I think that the army helmet's a little bit more damaged, but it's going to keep us a little warmer and the volume's a little less. So I think we'd go for the army helmet. So then we're going to go to our army helmet and we're going to check that against 
let's see army helmet versus the current helmet that we have which is our baseball helmet and let's see the baseball helmet actually stacks up pretty well it actually has better bash protection wow okay baseball helmets actually better than the army helmet who would have known well there's <laughs> there's that ruled out um we are definitely going to take the ballistics mask and I think we're going to try and wear that right away. So let's just have a look and see what we got. So our mouth is relatively encumbered already. But I think we can probably get away with um, taking something off our mouth. Let's see. We'll actually just use take off for now. No, that's throw. <laughs> there we go. So we got the bandana. And I think we also have the um, the scarf as well. So I think we, we might just try and remove the bandana for now. Yeah, and we're going to wear our ballistics mask. Wow, holy crap! It's yep, that's a that's a thing. We got it on. Um, so we can see that it is quite encumbered. It's it's yeah, it's encumbering our mouth quite a bit, which means it's going to slow us down. So we just need to we need to probably take a few things off. Um, the sunglasses, I know that we probably still have on. Yep, periclinic sunglasses. We'll take those off. So let's have a look. Eyes are still encumbered. Okay, so let's. This is probably the best way to see what we've got on each of our things. Sorry, we'll just attack the microphone. So we've got currently on our eyes a pair of sunglasses and a ballistics mask, which we'll have to make sure that we take that off. We've also got the dust mask and the wool scarf. So if we're having a look under the encumberment, the encumberments, it seems like it's coming from the dust mask as well as those so the dust mask is going to be filtering out things from our environment mm. I think we can I think we might just take it off for now so if we take off the take off the sunglasses and then take off the dust mask then oh there we go we can see our face creeping through there yeah, so it, there's there's a bit of encumberment going on there, but it's not it's not severe. It's not crazy. Now for the head, it is a little bit um, it's a little bit much at the moment, but um, the head encumberment isn't going to bother us too much. I am probably going to have to take a few bits and pieces off, like the hood, for ex to to be able to wear the survivor hood. We're probably going to have to take off something. I don't want to take off the chamber coif. Quaith, um, quaith, quaith. Is that the right terminology? Who knows? Who knows? Let's we'll see if we can take that survivor hood. Can we wear it? We cannot wear another helmet. So I might just need to change things around a little bit. If I take off the helmet for a second, then we might be able to wear the hood. We put on the hood. Oh wow, we can actually see it's kind of covering us. So it's kind of more like a poncho, I'm guessing. The survivor hood. Yeah, because the, uh, the coverage is 100%. So it's 100% coverage on the head, which is pretty awesome. It's covering us up really, really well, actually, in fact. Let's see if we can wear the baseball helmet over that. No, we can't. So by doing this, we would be opening ourselves up to potential damage, but that 100% coverage that we have is is awesome and can protect you from some other really terrible things, spores being one of them. We, we, we don't want to be... We don't want that. But um, looking at this, the, the coif gives us damn good protection already. So I think in combination, these two things are awesome. Really, really good. All right, next thing up for us is the gloves. So we're going to want to hit Shift-I again. And let's compare the two gloves that we've got here. We've got the Survivor gloves versus the... I think versus the Armored Fingerless gloves. So that's actually a little less encumbering for us. But we can see environmental protection is better. Uh, the bash protection and everything is better on this as well. But again, the coverage is so much lower. So I think having 100% coverage is just going to be all around better for us. So I think we're going to go with that. So I think at the moment we just have leather gloves on. Let's see. Track them down. Yeah, pair of leather gloves. So we'll take those off. And I've just hit throw again. <laughs> Okay, let's see, leather gloves, take them off, and let's grab and wear those survivor gloves. Alright, we got them on. 
Um, so we can see for hands, it's not even one yet. So it's really, it's really not that bad. But uh, where things might start to stack up is when we chuck on this, this AP suit. It's going to cover our arms and our legs. So we're probably going to have to do a real shuffle of everything. And we also need to try and chuck it on. Wow, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 shuffle things about. So I'm gonna take off that and the ballistics mask first, just so we can rewear them. Uh, let's see, ballistics mask, and let's wear the survivor hood. Okay, all right. No, it's pretty well protected right now because of this AP suit, but um, she's also gonna be superly well, really, really, really uh, over encumbered just because we're wearing a lot underneath of it as well. But we can see it gives a hundred percent coverage to the torso, the arms, and the legs. So freaking awesome it's a combination of body armor and a clean suit so it's yeah yeah it's gonna keep it from getting wet as well even um which which is really good um so we can see the torso encumber encumbrance has gone up a lot um as has our arms so let's go and first of all try and take care of the torso okay so that's giving us how much 20 okay so we've got 20 we've got 11 there three there we've got seven from the scabbard three from the shirt five from the kevlar vest but the thing is i think we probably if we take the kevlar vest off it's probably not going to affect our let's, let's just do a quick test let's take it off and see if it does lower our encumberment mm, only did by like a fraction Yeah, 49. Okay, so it, it is it is making a difference by taking it off. I guess it's down to 44. It's not taking a hell of a lot off, really. Um, so I think we're probably going to have to take off a few other bits and pieces. Hmm. We might need to lose the runner's pack for now. There's no room in our inventory for it, because, yeah. Damn. So it's getting, it's getting, it's keeping it pretty high for us. Want to have that, both of those on the outside. And that really isn't giving us too much encumbrance as well. It's just, uh, it's, it's really the AEP suit, which is going to give us a lot. But it also at the same time gives us pretty damn good projection all round. So it's, it's definitely, it's give and take. That's for sure. So we've got it down to 41, but, um, yeah. Put on the Kevlar vest for now. 46. See, that little bit of extra protection from that Kevlar vest, I think, is worth having that little bit more encumberment to deal with. I think I'm willing to take that. Okay, so... The question is, how are we going to be able to, is that viable? Because now if I'm having a look at my arms, we've got the shirt there. The elbow pads are giving us no encumber encumbrance at all. It's just, it's, it's, it's really all from the AEP suit. And it sucks because it's fitted as well. So it actually, it's, a, it's as good as it's going to get. But I think it's, it's realistic in the terms that, you know, you're not going to be able to wear something like this and still be able to move around the same way that you could before. So, we still have things down here that we wouldn't want to grab. A decent amount of guns. This manual auto shotgun being one of them. We don't want to leave that behind. And, well, the bone armor boots, I think that'll be weighing us down a little bit too much as well. We don't want Noah to be... Yeah, we don't want her to be too weighed down. I think the boots that she has right now are probably going to be good enough for her we can actually just go check that out so she's just wearing regular boots and they cut and bash protection is pretty good you're getting 12 protection from that and with these you're not even getting that actually so you know what stuff it we don't need that we don't need that but these fine weapons up here we might need I think we've got the Mosin already Ruger Redhawk Okay, one of the most powerful handguns in the world when it was released in 1979. So, it was a while ago. 
but it probably still does pack a decent amount of punch. It, it uses 44, so yeah, just slightly lower caliber than what I'm using at the moment. G36, Bushmaster ARS ACR. Carbine was developed for the military, used in the early 21st century. It's damaging and accurate, although its fire rate is a little bit slower. I'd like to grab them, but I'm not stressing about them. I'm pretty happy with the... Oh, holy crap, okay. <laughs> I just had a bloody heart attack. Um, <laughs> so whoever it is that's still up alive, up the top, he's, he's now whacking things, and that was incredibly loud in my ear. Uh, it probably won't be as loud for you guys, but it was, yeah, it gave me quite the fright. Um, and there it is again. <laughs> Like I was saying, I think we've got everything that we want to get from here. Um, the manual shotgun is probably the last thing that we want to get. These guns would be good to grab, but I just don't think we're going to have time to grab them. I'd be more interested in ammunition, which there still might be in this place, actually. There it is. There it is. Hmm. I'm going to need to check that out. I can't let them be. So it's... Seems like it's along here that we have our ammunition. Shotgun beanbag. And next one along. Damn, it's going to put us over. That's the only problem. We are carrying too much to take with us. We might just have to drop a few of these bits and pieces here. Um, the runner's pack, we, can, we might be able to wear. And we're on 46 at the moment. If we start wearing the runner's pack, it's going to put us on 49. Which is... Yeah, it's too much. It's too much for us to be a melee character. Because, yeah, our melee skill's just not going to be able to work with that. We're going to have to drop it. Let's see. We're going to drop a few other bits and pieces. Drop the bandana, the baseball hat, and the dust mask, and the sunglasses. That's going to allow us to carry that. And then I'll just try and track down the rest of the ammunition in here. So that was the 45 rounds. And actually we'll get the magnum rounds as well. So they're right next to each other. Oh dear. He's making a lot of noise up there. And we're going to have to deal with whatever he has brought along with him. I think we're actually going to grab that red hawk. And you know what? I think before we leave, let's activate our holster. Oh, actually, let's activate the sheath. We'll sheath the Nodachi. Activate our holster. And let's very quickly compare the two guns. I think we might have to... You know what? Let's quickly see if we can wield that. Reload it. Insert, insert the cartridge. And now let's compare them. Oh, it only shoots one of... Okay, we have to put one in at a time. That's not too bad. We can see that the damage is a hell of a lot higher on this thing. The dispersion is higher as well, but the armor piercing is up. This thing can... It looks like it can kick ass. I think we might actually be using this just for the time being. Uh, while we get out of here. Hmm. It might be replacing the L39. We have a lot more ammunition for the L39 right now, but this could be our go-to, quite possibly. And you can see that we reload just bit by bit. So it's good we can just reload one shot and fire sometimes. Let's activate the holster. Let's chuck the Ruger in there. Okay. But I think we're going to need to have that old girl in our hands. Because... There is going to be all kinds of hell waiting for us up there. But that's going to be next time. Thank you for joining me. I've been Rykon. This has been Noah. This has been Cataclysm. And until next time, stay tuned.